Michael. Welcome to Australia. Thank How you. How was your flight? Good, thank you. That's great. Why don't we uh, take a walk to the lab? Perfect. Claude, welcome to the Sydney Nanoscience Hub. This is a research facility that we built at the University of Sydney, really focused on quantum physics research. It's fantastic to have you here. Thank you for having me. What was the first impression you had by seeing our resonance watch, when you have seen the two balance wheels beating? Uh, the first time I saw the resonance watch, I was kind of overwhelmed by the, the way it balanced something extremely technical, which is obviously putting the, uh, the guts of the movement on the front side of the dial as opposed to the case back with a traditional aesthetic. So there was this very beautiful kind of dance of the two oscillators, right? They look like beating hearts and they oscillate in synchrony in a traditional watch. It's not a crazy looking, ugly, hideous thing. It's a really beautiful piece of artwork that highlights the mechanical aspects. And I think it was a, a great way to, to show both watchmaking virtuosity and also the fact that it seems like you value uh, technical prowess as much as you value artistic prowess. Resonance, which has a big history in the watch industry, was discovered by Christian Huygens, the inventor of the pendulum. He had several clocks in his workshop and then he saw that some of them do synchronize in between them. We had Antti Janvier, a famous French clockmaker, who achieved a proper uh, resonance pendulum clock, having two movements. Two pendulums shared the same suspension. They were beating at the same frequency. We had Abraham Louis Breguet, who worked on resonance on one of his pocket watches, having two balance wheels beating on the same frequency. And on the wristwatch, we have François Paul Schoen, who did Econometra Resonance, who was inspired by Abraham Louis Breguet. And we at Armin Strom had in 2060 launched a new mechanism in resonance because we have a uh, suspension system where we do allow the two balance wheels to communicate in between them. It's kind of amazing to hear you speak about this with a, a focus that's so precise on watchmaking because resonance is such a broad-based phenomenon in physics in the, in the discipline in which I work. Resonance really is the tendency of any body to vibrate or oscillate at a natural frequency, a frequency that's set by the physics of that device. And of course, even a single balance wheel in a watch is a resonant device. It has a, a set frequency or a single pendulum uh, corresponds to a resonant device. There's the period of the pendulum, which of course is independent of the length, which is why we use pendulum clocks in all kinds of timekeeping. But in even the kinds of physics that I do, resonance is everywhere. And I think it's actually more familiar to people than they might expect, because if you've ever been to the gym or if you've ever played with a jump rope, you know that only if you shake the rope at exactly the right rate, at exactly the right frequency, do you get the big waves, the big undulations that build up. That's a resonant phenomenon. It's the same in musical instruments. You see that only certain allowed frequencies will build up and you'll get a musical note coming up. Take that all the way today to quantum physics, where in our experiments, we use single trapped atoms as tiny pendulums, and they will oscillate at a natural frequency. We see resonance absolutely everywhere in our field. The approach that we had in resonance and what we have figured out is that somehow we have to make the two balance wheels communicate in between them. That was actually inspired by the pendulum clock, what Antti Janvier did. Antti Janvier said, by sharing the suspension of the two pendulum, I achieved resonance. Resonance in our case means that we have the two pendulums beating exactly in the same frequency, helping each other. A benefit which we have brought to the wristwatch by having a suspension system, like we have it assert frequency to the whole balance wheels to get them beat in resonance. In our field, in physics, you see that resonance in the way that Armin Strom has used it is actually one of the first problems that we study in first year physics. 
Because what we know is that when we have springs that oscillate, that vibrate, coupled together, that those springs share modes of motion. You can imagine this like marbles in a bowl. They can slosh back and forth together or they can slosh and bounce off one another inside the bowl. It's the same exact idea with resonant oscillators. And what we know is that when you have coupled oscillators, they'll be described by their shared modes of motion. And so what Armin Strong did, of course, is add this third spring, the, the clutch spring, which kind of pulls together the frequencies, the beat rates of the other two oscillators such that it's the shared mode of motion, the collective motion of these three coupled oscillators that sets the beat rate for the watch. It's a pretty amazing thing to see this piece of high horology linked back to uh, the fundamental physics that we employ all the time. The advantage of uh, using resonance in the wristwatch is that we can optimize the frequency during the day. That means we become, by synchronizing the two balance wheels, we have a much more stable frequency during the day. And having two balance wheels helping each other to hold the frequency is a benefit in time peaking because the average speed of the watch is much better performing than just having a single, a single balance wheel. So this, this idea is actually very similar to things that carry over into the most advanced research that we do in quantum technology today. What we see is that it always helps us to kind of spread out a physical system such that local shocks, like the idea of somebody smacking the, the wristwatch, are not as impactful on, say, the rate accuracy. For us, this involves spreading out information. So we actually store information in things that obey the rules of quantum mechanics, like individual atoms. Those individual atoms can be quite susceptible to perturbation from the environment. But if we spread the information out over many of them, we find that we can gain robustness. It's very much like the resonant phenomena you're talking about right now for watches. We take that concept and we apply it in some of the most advanced technology under development today. The future of resonance, this benefit is just for me as a watchmaker is huge because we are having so many complications today, struggling with energy, with disturbing the movement. So, you know, having, let's say, a chronograph being engaged to the movement, having maybe another movement helping to hold the frequency. There's a lot of benefit what we can take out of resonance. And I think the future of resonance is just huge in, in, in watchmaking. What about, how does resonance affect your future? Quantum physics is, it's just the science of very small things. It's the rules of nature that determine how things behave when we're talking about individual particles of matter like atoms or individual particles of light called photons. The rules that we find there are just different. For a long time, we thought it was nothing more than really strange math. But then in the 1980s, we discovered that this is real. We can access it in the laboratory. And since then, we've been working to build technology using this kind of science. This is what I do, this is what my company focuses on, it's what my academic lab focuses on. Building new kinds of technology that use this physics as a resource. It always amazes me that the ongoing advancements in high horology carry over to things that in parallel we're developing in quantum technology. That for us, the idea of resonance as a control concept, as a, as a concept that can improve the stability of a device is actually applied in exactly the technology that we're building. We use resonance in the individual atoms that we're accessing. We use resonant-like phenomena as we make our atoms insensitive to the environments around them. That's the nature of the work we do at our company. We're building technology that's immune to the environment just like you can make a watch movement that's largely immune to these variations that you see in power delivery or the motion of, of the watch. Resonance is known in the watch industry to have two, is it a the pendulums or balance wheels beating in the same frequency. But what I just have learned is that every single movement could actually be called a resonance movement. That's right, you could. Uh, 
any object that oscillates at a natural frequency, at one frequency, is a resonant object. So a single balance wheel or a single pendulum in a conventional clock, that's a resonant phenomenon. Now, what's different about the Armin Strom approach to resonance is that you're not just taking two, synch two oscillators, two things that vibrate back and forth, and synchronizing them, right? You're actually coupling them to a third spring. And so the phenomenon of resonance that you're employing comes from the shared modes of motion, where the clutch spring that couples the two balance wheels actually pulls the two frequencies of the oscillators, which can be a little bit different. They can beat at slightly different rates. It pulls them together so they oscillate in synchrony. And there, it's the presence of the third oscillator, the third spring, that is so different than other approaches that I've seen in high horology for achieving resonance. So thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing your experience in resonance with me. Great, thank you so much for coming, Claude. It's been a real pleasure having you here.